What's up everybody? We back. You know what it is. Got another couple of long ZVZ games here for you in this video. We're going to be taking a look at them, breaking them down, and you know, getting a better understanding of what ZVZ is looking like in 2023. I can tell you there were not many long ZVZs prior to this year. But things have been getting longer and longer. You see so many 20, 25, 28 minute games. There's very rarely beyond that. Past 30 minutes is a, a very small number of games. But things are getting longer and longer. And as players become better and better at balancing and playing the late game, they're going to be less afraid of it as well, right? Like, one of the things I... Can definitely attest to myself is in some cases if you're not really comfortable going into a late game scenario no matter what the matchup is you might just try to end things early right you might just throw away your army give up and just go okay i just have to win now because i don't know what's coming next but if you know how to play the late game and you're not afraid of it then you're much more likely to go into a more defensive posture drag things out into the late game where you feel like you have a better chance of winning or at least you have an idea of what you're supposed to do in order to win you have a win condition and that may continue to be the case that may continue to be more and more true here as time goes on it appears that we've got a bit of a divergence here in the early game between these two players i believe this was a nine pool out of zealot zealot down here in the bottom right we've got a no name rocket down here or over here in the left on Neo Sylphid. And he's actually gone for I think this was an overpool with gas and then right into uh hatchery here. Which um it's not a good start. It's definitely not a good start. You're gonna end up probably losing this uh this hatch here. Good chance you end up losing this. We're gonna pull drones to try and help out, but there's less drones here for Rocket, and unless his uh, drones actually do quite a bit of DPS. He's really not going to be able to win this fight. So his drones haven't really done anything as of yet. And he's got less drone, or he's got less links here. We've got two more links going to arrive. We'll see if Zealot goes in now. He's got, I think, three additional links over top of what Rocket has here. Oh, just two. Two additional links over that. And now we've got two more. So just one link over his opponent speed is on the way here we've already got the spire started for zealot but that's just par for the course here with the one base build going back home now going to set up that wall there at the front we'll have to hold on against all these links coming across the map but you know rocket probably not going to totally commit to this instead just getting his own layer start to drone up this natural make a wall here of his own at the front make sure that he makes enough of a threat so that zealot doesn't drone up behind this but you know just staying out here is going to be fine and eventually get into some spores so it's definitely going to be rocket who's the spore player of this game but he managed to hang on to his natural he didn't lose any drones as you can see the drone count is ahead right now but you have to minus from that Minus one for the evolution chamber and minus two for at least two spore colonies. We'll probably put one here. We might put one here. I don't know if we're going to put one here right away, but we'll need one over by the gas geyser here for sure. There's the evolution chamber. As you can see, oh, some sort of little aggress aggression in here. Maybe losing a couple of links, but not too much. You can see just a tiny bit of damage on some of these links and rocket is gonna head home he will have to build some more lings because when zealot comes out with his mutas if you don't have you know more lings than what zealot has he can just overwhelm you one thing i like to see is place a couple of lings somewhere out here on the map right now overlords are trying to obfuscate themselves on the map trying to hide somewhere on the map we're going right into four spores and we still have a good number of drones here, but again, not enough lings, I think. We'll have to bring uh, bring build more lings right now. Because otherwise, Zealot with the... I think he's actually got 
a good like six links more than what uh, Rocket has. So if he was to attack like right now, I think it could actually kill Rocket here. Yeah, Rocket just does not have a lot of links and he's just making straight up drones. So Zealot missing an opportunity right now. He's a little bit afraid of a counterattack. He knows that his opponents had more larva than him for quite some time, but he's not really aware of the amount of greed that's come out of his opponent in this game. Only building 11 lings. Six additional lings over that is what uh, Zealot has, plus the mutas. You can come in here with the mutas, you can snipe a couple of lings, and then you take the fight with your own lings. You win this fight, you can kill the spores, and you just win the game, so... Zealot putting himself in a bit of a hard position right now. He's making this game a lot harder than it needs to be. So he's coming in here, sniping a couple of links. You, you see this number of links? Gotta send these links across the map, man. Zealot is like a S rank player. I'm really shocked that he's not choosing to be a little bit more aggressive here. Spire is tucked in the back, losing a couple of drones here. Not getting the one shot on that second drone, unfortunately for Zealot. 16 workers to just nine so zealot's only been really producing mutas throughout this he really needs to get something done there's the sunken colony so now that the sunken's done it's even worse now for zealot because he's not going to be able to overwhelm with just with lings at the front he's given a bit too much time here to rocket and killing off a couple of drones is nice but He's taking some damage on these mutas, and there are going to be mutas of rockets out here in just a moment. So I, d I definitely favor rocket from this position. He's looking a lot better right now. I'm going to fly in, try to take a fight with this one spore colony. If he can kill the spore, then maybe he can go after the spire. Spire, can he just outrange the spore? It looks like he barely can. Not throwing down a second spore colony here. Really, rocket needed to start that... The moment you see them commit onto this, build another sunk, uh, another spore there. But he does have Mutus popping. He's going to have some Scourge popping out here soon too. But look at this. He's managed to find a way in. Zealot overcoming. And gets that Spire. That is huge, huge, huge deal here. This early on in the game. Having to rebuild the Spire is going to take so much time. Rocket. We'll have to build extra spores too. He's going to have to go up to like three, four spores at each base in order to hold on. He's going to get some Scourge out here trying to connect. Getting the moving shot going pretty good. He gets another couple of connections here. Looks like he will just barely be able to win this. No, just barely not. Whoa, actually popped out another Mutalist there. I guess that was made just as the Spire was going down. What do we have here? Four Mutas to four Mutas. He should be able to win this, especially with the Spore getting a couple of pot shots. And there's another Spore popping up, so that will push everything away here. And yeah, Zealot has been forced back. Where's the Spire? Did he start another one? No, he hasn't started another Spire just yet. Building more drones here is Rocket. Looks like we're going to have a natural here for Zealot. He had to kill that, that Spire, right? If he didn't kill that Spire, this game would already be over, I feel. We've gone so heavy and hard in the, uh, committing to mutas and just not producing drones. He would have been in a very bad way had he not killed that spire. Now that he's killed it, though, he's bought himself an enormous amount of time. He has so much time now to just kind of sit back and get into his drone production. So you can see drones are on the way. Going to be saturating this base and eventually getting into the saturation of the third or the, the natural as well. As quite a few mutas out right now, still has dominance of the air, but it's going to be a bit tough to dive on top of one of these sunken colonies. Just picking at drones and the edges of these mineral patches, probably going to be enough for now. Trying to get some kills there. Ooh, the bounce getting two kills. So actually picking up a good number of drones still very far behind is Zealot. On the terms of the number of the drones here, it's pretty lopsided. But look at this. I love it. Putting a, an overlord over top of the mineral patches there to try and block the vision of the mutas as they come in. Like, you can't really hit this one right here. Unfortunately, he's not going to mine from that, though. 
Trading Amita for a few more drones. Not bad. Not bad at all. Zealot. Only having a few minutes left. He's got two very low HP ones. Going to head back and regain that HP. Regen. Those health points. Do we have any upgrades so far? No. No upgrades on the way. It was a very tight game right now. At 10 minutes. Just as we cross that threshold. Zealot's natural comes up. And the Spire is once again done. So Rocket able to dump that gas that he'd been saving up from mining on these two gases for quite some time into a ton of mutas. If uh, Zealot comes in at the wrong angle at the wrong time here, he might get overwhelmed. There's actually more mutas here for Rocket right now than there are for Zealot. So if he catches him right here, where are you going to run as Zealot? Nowhere, that's where. And... There's going to be some Scourge coming as well. If Rocket was to engage him right here, there's really no way to escape it. He might just be able to overwhelm and overtake Zealot. Looks like losing an Overlord. It looks like both of them actually lost an Overlord there at the same time. Both getting supply blocked. Finally, an Overlord does pop. Two more on the way here. Finally, an, a Carapace upgrade coming out. For Zealot, he loses another Overlord, so really being hampered in his ability to build up his drone count right now. Another couple of drones do go down, though. Nice snipes here. Does take quite a bit of damage. That damage may be impactful going forward because we are going to see these Mutalus clumps actually come to blows here pretty soon. And if your Mutas have been taking Spore hits the whole time, then they're going to go down much, much quicker than your opponents. Look at how low this is. Just 12 HP on that. Where are those mutas that were sent back? They must have been resent into that group. And things are starting to even up. Actually, Zealot pulling ahead in drones now. Look at that. He's actually got more drones than rockets. So he's done enough economic damage in this game to really even things out. And now getting himself into a real lead finally. Still more mutas here for Rocket. Despite, you know, Zealot making them for way longer. He has thrown away a few to the Spore Colonies. And he's also not had that second gas mining for very long. So this is a remarkably even game. Though we do need to see more drones out of Rocket. He's so far behind in that drone count. One danger that can happen is he's not mining on the gas fully. So he's going to fall behind in mutas. But one danger that can really happen is that you could end up getting overwhelmed by Lings. Lings can end up just coming in and taking you out if you really don't have the mineral income. Here comes a big fight. A lot of Scourge going to connect here. Not the greatest micro from Zealot. How many Mutas does he have left here? Not too many. Looks like we're going to have Rocket overwhelm this position. But look at that. Another wave of Mutas comes in. And it's a lot closer than I expected. There's another couple of hits. Two mutas are very, very low, so they will go down rapidly here. As long as he targets them, so many mutas are so, so low. Bunch of them fall at the same time. More Scourge come in. It feels like Rocket is just about to win this game. Pushing Zealot all the way back into this corner. All of the mutas have been killed. He's going to go to work on some of these drones now. Ling's just sitting here, not really doing much. Chilling in the natural right now. More mutas going down here. Finally, some good connections on these uh, Scourge here for Zealot. Good micro so far, but does lose a muta now. Muta here trying to dodge as best he can. There's just one muta here hitting these drones, but eventually it will start to kill them off. Another muta going to pop out here, but Scourge are already available. Just going to connect on that immediately. Lings have run by into the main base as well. They're going to be going after the Spire here. Down to 11 drones apiece. 11-11 right now. This is crazy how close it is. But now pulling ahead here. Connects with that final Scourge. Able to get rid of that one Muta. That one pesky Muta. That's been dogging his drones for so long. Does save this Muta. But only with 12 HP mind you. One more Ling going to come try to run in here, but 10 to 11. Oh my goodness. We are completely even back up. The only thing in the advantage of Rocket is, of course, these spores and the sunken colony. Having those online 
is very important. Zealot alternatively has that flyer Carapace. So Carapace versus the static defense here. How many mutas total? Four total mutas. You can't really go for an attack at that low level of mutas right now. There is enough Scourge, and it would be very difficult to, uh, to, to micro against all of that. Rocket ahead in drone count right at this moment. But there is some gas in the bank for Zealot. How many mutas does he have now? I only see one. So Rocket really in the lead now actually dominating at this point i think there was too many mutas that popped out and died immediately to scourge uh it was a little bit too strong the camp here with the scourge over top of the eggs uh, really limiting the ability of zealot to produce and actually micro anything because if if you can't even move your muta after it pops out of the egg there's no chance to micro the scourge hit that and it's game over. We've only got two mutas, three, four mutas now. But the stack is getting larger and larger here for Rocket. This is not what I was expecting, guys. Out of a long ZVZ, but uh, this is pretty intense. We're going to go maybe to the mine out point. How close are we to that right now? All right, still quite some ways away. The main base of... Zealot looking a lot less healthy here. You know, he's been mining off of his main base a lot longer and a lot more intensely. So down to just 400 minerals. The other thing to worry about is the gas as well. Gas geysers here will run out eventually. We're not quite at that point yet. Maybe another four minutes. And this will be mined out. So Zealot... He's just building up his mutilist count. Both players working on that right now. Plus one is coming for Rocket. So he's going to even out the upgrades anyway. Has the full group of 11 mutas now. Scary to deal with. You're only about 9 mutas on the side of Zealot. And what do you do at this point? Starting to throw down some creep colonies. He's still behind in drones though. About six drone deficit here at the moment. And finding out about this third base is actually huge. Knowing that that's there is very, very important. Knowing is half the battle. And in these ZVZ games, figuring out when your opponent is deciding to expand can be critical. Three more Ling's going to head up here. Try to get some more damage on this hatch. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to kill it because... Mutas are coming to assist. And it looks like Lynx will just be running away here. Three of them still saving their lives, so not bad. Figuring that out and dealing a little damage there. Softening it up for later. It'll be up to Rocket to get a couple of sunken colonies up here. Sunken and a couple of spores, probably what I would go for. And once that's done, then that will be secured and it'll really be up to Zealot to get his own third base operational, which he's planning to take here on the center right location. That's very far away from Rocket. It'll be hard for him to get uh, units over here. But um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a good location to take. Come to a pretty calm moment here, guys, in what's been an incredibly... Back and forth, intense ZVZ so far. But more as more hatchers are added on, as the production begins to increase here, I think we may go all the way. I think we may go right up into Hive. I haven't seen this game already, but it's just starting to look that way. People are going to... Uh, the players are going to start to look for unconventional means to get larger advantages especially when there's a, a deficit in the number of uh, upgrades you have on metas if you're behind on meta upgrades it's very very tempting to go for an additional tech rather than trying to compete on metas so falling behind here is rocket he's not actually upgrading anymore with his spire whereas zealot continuing that upgrade path he's already 
finished plus one here on his armor plus one attack is about to finish as well there it is plus one attack starting for rocket as well ling's gonna make their way over here it looks like ramp block from rocket oh actually he loses that fight now unfortunate stuff for rocket he didn't even kill a single ling four links to four links no upgrades that's just goes to show you how much of a big deal uh, micro is in the ling war and rocket's actually going for a full-on counter attack while this is going on let's zoom out this is going to be a massive battle there's more than two groups of mutas on either side he took a bunch of hits from scourge and now rocket actually going to back away from this fight realizing that he's done a lot of damage with the scourge but if he stays remains and loses all of his mutas it's not going to be a good fight he hasn't saved the space over here and it's going to end up going down to just four lings are you shitting me Oh my goodness, Rocket really uh, screwing the pooch here, I would say. Losing his, uh... oh God, here we go. Losing that hatchery is rough, but losing all your meat is far rougher. It looks like we've, we've got just enough here for Zealot. The connections on the Scourge just that much better. And he's able to push everything back and he might go all the way maybe even running right in here to the main base no he's gonna turn around and kill three overlords for free and that's totally fine you've got your third base online might as well uh back off here get that third gas operational um no need to to kind of throw the lead here uh if you were to come into the main base for instance, and spores and, you know, scourge popping out, deal enough damage, they might be able to hold on. And then it, it, the muta count would be completely reset. Right now, he's got the full advantage here in terms of that muta count. So not wanting to trade out, just backing off. Not going to end the game just yet. Sunken Colony coming up here in the center right. Zealot has managed to snake this lead away in a big way. About four, five, no, six drones ahead already. And a huge, look at that, supply advantage as well. So six drones ahead, but think about how many mutas that is, guys. That's a lot of mutas uh, over Rocket that he has right now. I think we should see Rocket transition here. This is about the time. If you're going to be this far behind on mutas... And your opponent has a third gas as well. He's going to come up here and he's going to stop this base. All right. I don't know why this game's going to go on any longer. We'll stick around and see. But I think that Rocket is just about done. He really doesn't have a leg to stand on here. He's down a gas. He's got no further tech. He's behind in upgrades. Okay, now he's just caught up in upgrades. He's way behind in the mute account. I'm going to speed this game up a bit. And we'll see what ends up happening here in the coming minutes. Just going to follow these mutalists around. Let's see uh, what Zealot decides to do with them. Does he just go for the bust? Try to finally break through? Or what is he going to do here? Because I know this game doesn't end just yet. Still just looking around here, making sure that there's no additional bases. At least for now, Zealot coming in. Let's take a look at this fight. Slowing it down to regular fastest speed. All right, Scourge going to come in from a kind of an awkward angle there. Almost got the surround, but kind of missed with part of this Muta group. Some drones coming out. That's a lot of spores. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is this? I think this might be the thumbnail here. I'll take a picture of that. Uh, that is crazy, guys. Why do we have like seven spores here? That is wild, but Zealot not really able to break that, I guess. Five spores over here in the natural. I wonder why seven spores in the main, five in the natural. That's uh, That seems weird. Why not six and six? Like, aren't they both equally as important? And, um... If you lose the natural, don't you just lose the game anyway? Another base gonna come up here for Rock... Uh, for, for, for Zealot. So, Rocket just gonna sit here. And be defensive. 
And I don't see how that's ever going to win him a game. Already uh, behind, now going to be behind once again in Carapace with the plus two finishing up here. Let's go ahead and accelerate the speed once again until we get an engagement at least. Somewhere there's got to be an engage. Why hasn't he built a queen's nest yet? I really feel like Rocket just doesn't have a hope in the world. Why not build a queen's nest and try to get some money plague? You know, I really feel like that could be doable. That could be possible. Coming in, he's going to try and fight the seven spore colonies. All right, maybe not. Yeah, probably, probably would be a bad idea now that I think about it. Looking for just any free kills he can. Holding on to his lead right now. Coming back in. Just going to kill a couple more spores here. Free kills on some mutas. There it is. Killing off the spores. And yeah, there's nothing that Rocket can do. About it. Why does this game go on any longer? That I really don't understand. Zealot has annihilated this, this natural here. It all came down to those fights. Kind of in the middle of the map. Right when... Uh, Rocket was losing his third base. I don't know why he decided to go all in uh, while his third base was done, but not quite protected. Just, oh God, really? Are we doing this? Oh man, how annoying. I'm just gonna speed through a little bit. It was a decent game, Rocket. Why you gotta ruin it like this, man? Why you gotta be like that? Yeah, exactly. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Come on. What are we doing? This is like some games that I've played, guys. I've played some games on uh, just regular Battle.net off ladder where you will get like these uh, Zerg players who they make a map where the, the mineral patches are stacked and so they have unlimited minerals. And then they just keep mining off of like three, four minerals and they build, you know, like 50, 100 sunkins or 100 spores. And you just can never break into their base. Looks like he is going to finally finish him off. There it is, guys. GG. Rocket is done. Why did we have to do that? Very, very strange play from Rocket. But let's jump into our second game. Okay. Our next game here. Going to be HM in the bottom left hand corner versus a barcode zerg player who deleted his count shortly after this game hm he is a pro player who hasn't had any appearance in the asl as of yet but he's had some good results in a few other tournaments he's even participated in the kcm time or two so he is a high ranking player to be sure on the ladder, a pro player and a Zerg player. We'll see how he does in this ZVC. Now he started off with a 12 hatch play. His opponent just going for this more normal kind of casual uh, uh, nine, uh, nine pool play, nine pool speed here coming out of his opponent so this is going to be hard to hold very very hard this is considered a uh, counter build that it's very very difficult to pull your way out of and unfortunately most of the links have been sent in the direction he's in here so uh, the links are going to arrive and the uh, hatchery is going to be taking a lot of damage here instant pull from hm we'll see how this pro gamer deals with the early aggression here wow great pulling back with the drones look at how quickly he pulls away the drones that are injured he does lose one but that is to be expected really no way to fight this without losing a few drones here and losing just one so far not the worst thing in the world i'll say very very manageable here we might lose a couple more because the Ling speed is done way sooner than his own Ling speed. So, you know, he's going to wait for a little bit here. Maybe kill one more drone. He is going to get it. One more drone does go down. Another drone maybe here at the natural as well. Down to just eight workers. 
So I think that was only one drone killed, actually. There's pure drones in production now for HM. He's going to stabilize with his speed finishing up. Spire is on the way for his opponent. So, barcode up here. Mr. Yellow Barcode has done some damage. But it's not going to be enough to win him this game. He's not in a, an unlosable situation right now. HM has a really good chance. And he has a few options. He could just completely, uh, you know, commit to building links right now. And he should be able to overwhelm. It'll be up to Barco to actually build a sunken. And he already has built one. So it's a good thing that HM is not going to fully commit to trying to break this. Um, he's building five drones back at home. So he'll probably build his own sunken colony here. Uh, because actually there's more lings on the map for his opponent right now. He actually needs some defense. Otherwise, he could just lose to a ling at, uh, attack right now. I don't actually see any sunken. HM, you're going to be in trouble here, my dude. Okay, he's going to throw down an uh, evolution chamber. And the spire is now done. So we are going to have those mutas coming out. But first, he's got to deal with the lings here. Two links of his own popping. He will be able to fight. Looks like he's just barely going to lose this one. We'll have to fight with drones here. He needs to be starting some sunken or some spores pretty soon. Those spores need to be on the way here. Uh, and he, like the evolution shaver is done. He doesn't have spores ready. He doesn't have... Um, he doesn't have the uh, creep colonies ready for the spores to begin morphing. So he is in quite a bit of trouble. Really getting a bit too greedy here. He hasn't lost any drones, but he may he may lose some drones to the mutas as they come across the map. Um, looks like they're going to stop to kill an overlord. And that's going to buy just enough time here for HM to actually get his spores down and ready. We're going to have two spores in each base. His overlords are now protected. Though he is supply block for the time being. Lings are going to head out across the map. Try to do some harassment damage. It's going to be hard with the sunken colony there. But you're really just going to send these Lings out on the map. To buy a little bit of time. Make sure that the mutas can't be harassing him right now. They have to be headed home. And also to make sure that he's not throwing down a uh, hatchery here for free. Which he was planning to. He was planning to throw down a hatchery here. So... With the hatchery going down, now there's a... Th th this is a problem, right? Like, you actually have to stay here with the mutas when there's a group of lings like this out on the map. You can't do what uh, Zealot did in the last game, which is just camp on your ramp and continue to build mutas endlessly until eventually you have enough to overwhelm a spore colony. That's just not going to be an option right now for um, this barcode player because he's decided to take this space. So, he takes this space. He's gonna stop the, the lings from running in here, but that's been spotted. He's planning to catch up in economy here. He's nine drones behind and he's done no damage to HM. So this is a build that's not without its risks, right? There are still risks involved with not being aggressive here. More lings gonna pop out, but there are quite a few lings here ready to backstab for HM. And more lings are hitting the field as well. Coming in, he's built enough mutas to actually go up to the spore, but he's trying to have his cake and eat it too here. He wants to kill the spore and take over the natural while simultaneously not having enough back at home to actually defend his own natural, which could end up going about the way you would expect. He is going to be able to kill the gas here. And it looks like he killed another... Uh, an, a, a trying to build uh, a creep colony there as well. And looks like he is going to be able to keep his natural alive. So, wow. This went very well. He indeed eats his cake. And, in fact, has it as well. Really, really well done here by our barcode player hm doing everything he can everything right here to try and take advantage of the situation hitting with the lings building the extra spores here trying to hold off 
trying to take advantage of his quicker two gas but he just doesn't have any defenses in this position he loses the gas and he's sent all the way back home this is uh this is now a really dirty position for hm to be in he's finally got mutas popping but he can't take his gas he just doesn't have a spore here with which to do so he needs to get this spore out he needs to get a bunch of Scourge and Mutas to actually fight here. Still no second gas for his opponent. So that's something at least. That is something. But the opponent, he even pulled out the Mutas as he was fighting the Spore. The ones that were damaged. He pulled out the ones that were damaged and sent them back home to defend. So really smart, smart play. And this might actually be a pro player. I'm not sure if it is or not. We just don't know because the account was deleted. But... He is playing like a pro, and you can see his APM very, very high. This is a super high uh, MMR game right here between these two Zergs. HM going to try and quickly sneak out that Spore Colony, but it looks like the Mutas are not going to let that happen. Mutas are present here to try and help out, and the Spore will finish. He just comes in and trades for one drone here instead of trying to execute that Spore once again. Catching up in drones now. Third, uh, second gas is going to finish at about the same time. And that's going to favor our yellow Zerg, who has the Mutalisk advantage, and he's not going to be in a deficit of gas. He's already got 700 gas banked up. So as he pops out more drones here, he's going to be able to saturate this and eventually get his gas mining going over here at the natural as well. And put himself in an even better spot here coming into the main base now going for a drone or two as he can trying to counterattack here into the natural but there's lots of lings here as well as those mutas so not going to be an option coming in for another kill but not able to get a pot shot here on these drones full map control goes to our yellow zerg and two with two hatches here i think there was I think one hatch did start here, but I think it was canceled by HM. So second hatch here now means that there's more larva. And with more larva means that we're going to have the ability to drone up a lot faster. You can see he's really starting to catch up in that regard. And he will also be able to uh, overwhelm with lings a little bit later on. So you might see, we might see HM lose all of his lings. And then a huge swell of lings come out of the yellow Zerg player as he really gets this uh, mineral mining online. He'll also be able to spend all the gas that he's been accumulating, which is actually a necessity here in this matchup. You have to spend that gas ASAP. And I think that time is, has pretty much come here. We've got the mineral mining that we needed. We have... Uh, no overlord supply block here so we're just gonna be able to pump everything into mutas and there is going to be a serious mutalisk um advantage here pretty soon for the yellow zerg however we are gonna have a plus one armor coming up for hm a little bit faster and he's gonna try and take his third Ooh, i don't know about this yeah i think you just send a lot of lings here rally lings and uh and scourge to this position and just had come through an attack you should be able to break this i think it should be the case and yeah all the lings are actually dead so he he I guess hm sent out all his lings in order to fight and now he's gonna get overwhelmed with the mutas as well oh no losing so many mutas right now oh boy that was a lot of lost mutas so many of these badly badly bruised here He's going to try to take some pot shots at that extractor. Of course, the spore is in range. No matter how, what angle you take with those mutas, you are going to take at least one hit from the spore. Plus, he might lose some uh, something to these mutas as well. More than a group of mutas here for HM. He now has this hatchery. Am I, am I crazy? Was this hatchery not there just a minute ago? There's the queen's nest. Okay, so... Look, this is what I was talking about last game. It's like, if 
you are falling behind in the mutilus count you know you, you tried to get this base up it's not working you're gonna lose this game basically a hundred percent if you just continue with the mutilus on mutilus battle and hm he's a smart guy he's gonna throw down his queensness and go to the next layer of tech and you know he's not that uh, weird dummy that we had in the last game we just threw down a ton of spores he realizes what his win con is and he's gonna try and go for it trying to take over this position once again the yellow zerg actually going to be able to kill the extractor here and things just get worse for hm as time goes on losing that extractor just not a tenable position really once you've lost that you're going to be in so much pain and he's losing some more drones here still taking some more fights more mutas arrive as well no scourge really in these fights surprisingly Gonna be getting burrow there as well. Did the yellows are yellows are getting burrow, interestingly enough, in these kind of uh, crazy situations. Mutas here, about twelve mutas are available for our teal zerg player, but I think we've got more than a group here. We've got eleven, and another four, plus another six, seven, gonna be joining this group. So. He really has a huge mutilus advantage. Now the hive on the way. The natural gas is mining with two spores. I think maybe he can hold on to that. I think maybe the time of the yellow zerg just trying to punish this area over and over again is, is, is about out. It's about finished. Going to come into the main base. He sees the hive. That is really important. Seeing the hive. Um, good information here. He might just throw down his own queen's nest immediately. To, count, to, to counter that or we might see him wait until the hive is done and you start throwing down tech buildings like let's say you throw down a double defiler mound or you know you start making a, a greater spire or something like that we might see the yellow zerg just build metalis only build metalis from here on and as all the tech is being thrown down you know as we're transitioning into that tech come in here and hit the main and just try to win uh, with pure muta. Uh, just before the tech comes out, it's a great move to just end the game. Uh, when your opponent's not building muta, they're not going to have... They already don't have as many as, as you do. And when they're transitioning, they're just not going to be able to build anything else. Because they're spending all their gas for the transition. That can be the moment where you can just overtake your enemy zerg player. And uh, destroy their main base and destroy the hive, destroy everything, just win the game at that moment. It's like Yells are going to fall back for now. Nothing in production here in terms of further tech. Just a third base coming up for our Yellow Zerg. So he's only got about 20 supply ahead. Flying in, one Muta to spot. He sees the Greater Spire. So. Everything has been revealed here. I really like that move, actually. Just sack one Muta. Let's find out what the tech is you're going for. And that way we can counter it appropriately. And it's the Greater Spire. So we're going to see some Devourer play here. And if you guys don't know, the way Devourer works is when there is an Acid Spore, uh, they do stack up to nine spores. And each spore slows the attack speed of the unit the spore is on. And it also adds one damage to that unit so if you're attacking let's say you're attacking with only one damage but there's nine spores you're gonna deal 10 damage so here we've got nine damage glaive worm minus two carapace you're gonna be dealing seven damage but if there's nine spores on there we're gonna be dealing dealing 16 damage so that is very important. I'm not sure if that stacks with glaives as well. If a glaive procs that damage, um, it may do. But I just know that that actually adds on to the, at least to the official attack or to the, to the actual attack of the Muta. Now I've seen uh, Devourer get used a lot. Look at that crackling upgrade as well. He's going to have a lot of minerals. Not as much gas as his opponent, but maybe he can make something happen with crack. It's like a fourth base on the way here for the yellow zerg. I've seen devourers used quite a lot. 
but I've never really seen them do very well, unfortunately. Maybe adding Hydra in might be a better idea. If you if you go Hydra, you know, each attack is gonna it's gonna add that uh, extra damage from the uh, acid. So, I don't know. Maybe that, that might be a good move. However, we're going to see this big fight come in now. A lot of Scourge here ready to go. Quite a bit of Acid Sports thrown on these. Didn't get even one of these Devours just yet. Coming in to take this fight now. Some more Mutas coming up to connect here. A lot of Mutas going to go down to these Scourge. Scourge trying to connect maybe onto some of these Devours, but they haven't really been able to do much. Really spreading out the Mutalus here. This is quite the fight. It's really hard to see what's going on because of all the Mutalus Glaze flying around. But it looks like Yellow Zerg taking this fight pretty handily, targeting down the Mutas and chasing them around. He really needs to get uh, some spores onto all of these. Look at that, seven spores on these now. Nine spores, they're gonna be attacking so slow, but there's only four Mutalus remaining here for our Teal Zerg. And although they're firing slowly, they are still firing. And it looks like he's going to be able to clean this all up with Scourge now. Ouch. That was an intense fight. Back and forth for sure. And actually, whoa. All right, I'll have to do a picture in picture there because a lot of Ling damage just happened during that fight. I'm glad that I didn't pull away from what was going on with the mutas, but we really need to get an insight on how much damage was just done there by the Lings of HM, which are still running in and trying to get some more damage here, but looks like they're going to be denied now, finally. This base was also killed over here, and 20 workers to 33 behind in... Uh, overall supply now is the yellow zerg and we've got some spores coming up here too so maybe he can hold this if he can hold the third base and saturate it then he's gonna be uh mining on two gas again because <laughs> this gas is about to run out but at least he'll be on even gas finally to what his opponent did and this is what i was talking about you guys hive tech is good in zvz even if you're behind, even if your opponent's been mining more gas than you, they've got more bases than you, they've got the Mutalisk Edge. If you are willing and understanding how Hive Tech works, there are comeback mechanics. There are a There is the ability to potentially make a comeback that's so exciting, honestly. As a Zerg player, it makes me so excited for this matchup. For the future of this matchup that we're seeing things like this finally be understood and discovered uh, by the highest tier level of player i've never seen devour work uh really well in the past i've seen it used like i said tons of times but that actually was not the worst devour use of usage i've ever seen that was pretty darn good and the important thing was he got the ling damage while that fight was happening and he managed to get this third base up. Both of those were absolutely necessary to keep him in this game. And now I would say he is, he is unironically ahead right now. He is seriously doing well. And we could get another upgrade here. One more Glaive Worm upgrade for the yellow Zerg. But he can't go into a third upgrade. He can't get plus three armor until he gets Hive. And he's just not willing to do that. And HM... The pro player, he is absolutely willing to go there. And this may end up being the thing that wins him this game. The fact that he has discovered the power of the Hive Tech Zerg in this matchup. There it is. Queen's Nest finally going to come down here. And where is it? Over here at the third base. Yellow Zerg trying to take a fourth as well. His Lings just cannot stand up to the Lings of HM right now. I'm going to keep an eye on these. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Quite a few of these Devourers end up going down. I think two or three fell there to the Scourge. It takes three Scourge hits to kill a Devourer. Even without the upgrade advantage here. Still taking good fights. What are we going into? We're going into Ensnare. 
Oh my god. Ensnare? Gonna be the answer? Are you kidding me? Why are we doing Ensnare? Why not Greater Spire? We're not even upgrading with our Spire. We've got plenty of money. Why are we not going into that tech? That is crazy to me. He's also not getting... Um, he's not getting Hive at all. So... This is wild to me. I think this is probably the worst move. Honestly, the 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 ensnare ability is an interesting ability, but I think it does it does the least uh, in this matchup. And I've seen it used quite a lot, even when like when your opponent is just going pure muta and you're going pure muta as well. It barely helps. It the thing is like it slows. Uh, the movement speed, but I don't think it slows the attack on Mutas. I could be wrong about that. But it slows their movement speed, and the Devourer does way better. It's just it's just a, a better overall spell. It stacks up to nine times. It slows your attack, and it helps your Mutas to deal damage. So it's just a way, way better unit. Here comes Lings once again. The Cracklings, watch how quickly they just annihilate these Lings. It's not even close. Mutas are going to have to come down here to take this fight. Here we go, Devourer. Oh, there's the... Uh... <laughs> there's the... Uh, spell usage there. Trying to slow down these Devourers. But what are you going to do from this position? Okay, finally he's going to go into Hive. He's lost his fourth base once again. Looks like fourth... Probably going to come down here pretty soon for HM. Muta's kind of heading around the long way here. Where do they want to go? Are they going to go look for an alternate route to attack? I don't, I'm not sure what they're doing right now. Heading up to the, towards the north here. Hive is going to be finished up pretty soon. Now for Yellow Zerg. He's going to take a base up here, but again... Cracklings, man. They're so damn good. They're always going to beat your regular Lings. And if you put a plus one upgrade on these, let me tell you, they will just demolish bases. Just demolish them. You turn your, uh, you pay attention to your Mutas for a second in a fight and the Lings can kill your entire main base. It is wild how fast they will kill Zerg buildings at that point. Look at this. Just disappearing. This hatch is going to go down so fast. Looks like he was trying to get some connections there. With some Scourge on these Devourers, but not able to get it. What's going to be the tech? I'm so curious. Is he going to go for Defiler? His Hive is done. He starts plus three Carapace. I just don't get it. Why? Why are we doing plus three Carapace right now? This is just a... This is a non-pro player for you guys. He just does not understand what is happening right now. And again, just a player that's just... He's not comfortable playing a Hive ZVZ. He doesn't know what to do. He's going into plus three armor for his Mutas. And... I was saying before that the, the, the Acid Spores, it just... Adds so much damage. Minus one damage really means nothing when you're plus nine with nine cross or uh, with nine acid um, spores on you. It's just, it's brutal. It's brutal. He's gonna lose another hatch up here. He's trying to take hatches on either side of the map over and over again, and HM just denying and denying and denying and denying. Looks like some uh, some scourge are gonna connect. Still quite a few devourers and. You know, if you manage to target a group of uh, Amutas with this number of Devourers, nine instant Acid Spores on them. Instant. Get all nine Acid Spores at the same time. It's just so strong. Not a lot going on right now for our Yellow Zerg. Looks like that is now done. Wait, did I see that wrong? Did he cancel? Or was that actually... Was that actually a T, uh, HM who was getting the upgrade? I'm so confused right now. What am I looking at? We don't have... Uh, we don't have Adrenal Glands. I don't have Crack Upgrade. It's like a fight down over here. A few Lings getting in on this fourth base. 
Ling's countering over here as well, but that's going to be protected. So fourth is going to end up coming up. Fifth is here as well. I don't think he can defend both of these at the same time. Trying to connect with Scourge. Three Scourge for a Devourer is pretty insane value. That's a lot of minerals that went in, go into a Devourer. So being able to pick that off, very, very good. But you know what's even better? If you can put a Plague on these, they're not fast. And if you pull, bring a Defiler out, Plague this, Mutas can kill them in just a couple seconds and they won't be able to get all their Acid Spores onto your Mutas. You can just come in and snipe them. So I'm really shocked that we're not seeing at least him, uh, Yellow Zerg, try to put down a Defiler's, ma uh, Defiler's Mound here. Plus, we've got all these drones here mining on one mineral patch. which should be spread out a little bit better in order to optimize uh, a bit more here. A lot of cracklings coming up to deal with this hatchery. That's going to be taken out for sure. This hatch has also been taken down. Oh, my God. That is so annoying. That the, the cracklings just they just win, guys. They're so strong. I can't believe we haven't seen crack upgraded. We've got 1,600 minerals. We can build so many lings to to go ahead and take these fights. Looks like some Scourge did come in, deal some damage, maybe pick off a couple more of these Devourers. Looks like he's going to get a couple hits on some of these Mutas as well. More Cracklings moving down to the center right once again. Yellow Zerg has just been denied this space so many times. <laughs> At this point, you've just you, you've got to be losing your mind here as the yellow zerg and i really think that's what's taking place because he just has so many drones look at all the drones he's got and he's still not mining here he's not mining over at this base he's not mining here either of course he's trying to defend two bases at once and he keeps continuously losing both of them trying to catch uh devourers in the middle of the map with scourge but we're gonna get scourge from hm as well his supply is 20 above his opponent. Link's going to come in here and deny this space. Mutas are going to come over here along with the Lings and deny this space now. And I think we finally come to the end. We finally come to the last battle here. With 1,800 minerals in the bank, what is going on? Yellow Zerg really a, a great player in the early game. You know, he made a... Uh, a really good showing for himself, you know, taking over this, over the natural, killing off the gas, doing all that good stuff, you know, taking that fight uh, earlier on, winning over here, you know, denying the third base, getting the mutilistic advantage, but you can see HM, he just knows, man, he knows how to play this out a lot better and his opponent he's even gonna find this base up here in the top left with one single link oh my god it's so annoying he's found that again he's gonna kill it with just one ling that's it that's all you need yes that will actually kill it look it's not gaining any hp it's actually losing hp even though it's still building it's actually losing hp just from one ling attacking it that is wild Still no upgrades, but the attack speed is so incredibly fast. Big group of links heading down here. Do they have crack? No, they do not. Still so unfortunate that they have not been given that upgrade. I think that is a huge, huge mistake that's been made in this game. He could have taken this space as well. Like, why not? Just take this, start mining some minerals. He taps out. GG. Oh, what a painful, painful game there for a Yellow Zerg player. Losing so much to these Cracklings. Being outmaneuvered here in the late game. And the Devourer coming in clutch. You never think of this as the, the unit that's going to save the day. But actually, winning this fight for him. Managing to take this game. HM going to feel real good about this comeback and cleaning up all the mutas just showing us how good he feels about it before leaving this game guys i hope you enjoyed the latest edition here of the long cvz series i've really been enjoying it I'm, I'm liking this matchup more and more and i think i'll continue looking for more good games from the latter 
They don't happen very often, but when they do, I'll be there. And they'll be on this channel for you to enjoy. So I'll see you guys in the next video.